Hi, welcome to the Electronics channel. I'm Dave Williams, and in this video, I am going to show you how to calculate parallel impedance when you have resistors, inductors, and capacitors, or some combination of those devices in parallel with each other. So in this diagram here, I have an inductor, a capacitor, and a resistor all in parallel with each other because you can see that they're sharing one node at the top of the circuit and one node at the bottom of the circuit. And here I had, I'm showing individual components, but really this could be a circuit where I have some arbitrary impedance Z1 in parallel with another arbitrary impedance Z2 in parallel with a third impedance Z3. And I could go on and on with multiple impedances in parallel. And in this video, I want to show you how you can calculate the total impedance that would be the impedance between those two points or in this particular circuit the impedance between those two points as well as the general rule and how that general rule is derived for calculating parallel impedances okay i've redrawn the circuit here and the circuit is showing three impedances z1 z2 and z3 and they are all in parallel because again they're sharing the same top node and the same same bottom node and what i want to do is calculate the total impedance so that's the impedance between those two points now kirchhoff's voltage law and current law as well as ohm's law are all going to apply in these parallel circuits and so i can i can use those laws to help me determine a general equation for the what the total impedance is for this parallel impedance circuit. Since these components are all in parallel with each other, the voltage across them will all be the same. So the total voltage is going to be equal to the voltage across component 1 and equal to the voltage across component 2 and equal to the voltage across component 3. The currents are not necessarily the same though. The total current will be the current going into the circuit here will be same as the current coming out here current through z1 is there current through z2 is there and current through z3 is here this current plus this current plus this current is going to be equal to the total current so i've got a total current coming out some of it goes through z through z1 some of it goes through z2 and some of it goes through z3 so that total current is going to be split between those three components. So I can write that out. In an equation form, Iz2 equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. Now using Ohm's law, where the phasor current is equal to the phasor voltage over the impedance, I'm taking this equation and substituting it in to these equations, I get the total voltage over the total impedance gives me the total current and that's equal to the voltage across Z1 divided by the impedance of component 1 plus the voltage across Z2 divided by the impedance of component 2 plus the voltage across that third component divided by the impedance of that third component. And then going back to the equation here that's showing all of the voltages are equal to each other, just looking at the fact that all of those components are in parallel with each other, therefore they will have the same voltage. I can see that if I divide both sides of the equation by that voltage value, all of these voltages will cancel out. And I will get the equation for the total impedance being 1 over the total impedance is equal to 1 over impedance 1 plus 1 over impedance 2 plus 1 over impedance 3. So I've rewritten the equation here just to make it a little bit neater and if I had more components in parallel then I would have the inverse of Z4 plus Z5 plus Z6 all the way up to Zn, however many components I have in that circuit. At this point I want to introduce the concept of admittance. An admittance is denoted by the character y. And it is, it is also a vector component. And it is equal to the inverse of impedance. And so you can see how admittance can be useful when we're looking at parallel circuits 
because the total admittance is going to be equal to the admittance of component 1 plus the admittance of component 2 plus the admittance of component 3. And sometimes when dealing with these parallel circuits, it's sometimes easier to calculate in admittances. And then if you need to know what the impedance actually is, figure out what the total admittance is, take the inverse of that admittance, and you get the impedance back. Okay, let's do an example where I want to find out what the total impedance is between these two points. And in my circuit, I have a 200 ohm inductor and a 100 ohm resistor. What is the total impedance for this? So I know that the inverse of the total impedance is going to be equal to the inverse of the impedance of the inductor plus the inverse of the impedance of the resistor. Or it will be equal to the admittance of the inductor plus the admittance of the resistor. I know what the impedances are, so let's figure out what the admittances are. The admittance of the inductor is going to be equal to 1 over J200, or I can write this as 1 over 200 with a phase angle of 90 degrees, writing, writing that out in polar coordinates. So this is going to make it a little bit easier because I can see then that the magnitude of this is going to be equal to 1 over 200 and the phase angle is going to be equal to negative 90 degrees. The admittance of the resistor is equal to 1 over 100, and I will include the phase angle here of 0 degrees, and that is equal to 0 0.01 with a phase angle of 0 degrees. So to get the total admittance, it's going to be the vector addition of this admittance and this admittance. So this will be the magnitude of 1 over 200 in the negative imaginary direction plus 1 over 100 or 0.01 in the positive real direction to give me a vector equal to that. Total admittance is equal to 0 0.01 in the real direction minus j 0 0.005 in the imaginary direction. And of course I can write this out in polar coordinates and that is equal to the square root of 0 0.01 squared plus 0 0.005 squared and the phase angle is the inverse tan of negative 0 0.005 over 0 0.01 and this works out to 0 0.011 with a phase angle of negative 26.6 degrees. One thing I didn't talk about when I started talking about impedance is the units of impedance. Well, it's the inverse of ohms, of course, and the SI unit for that are Siemens, denoted by the letter S. I'm not quite done because I want to know what the total impedance is. Total impedance is the inverse of total admittance. So this is going to be 1 over 0 0.011 Siemens with a phase angle of negative 26.6 degrees. So this will, the magnitude will be 1 over 0 0.011, which is equal to 90.9 ohms. And the phase angle is going to be 26.6 degrees. That is my total impedance for this simple circuit here. Let's do a more complicated example where once again I have three components in parallel. Or maybe these components, are, they're not actually individual components but they're, again, a combination of components that are giving us these individual impedance values. Okay, so to calculate the total impedance, it's going to be easier if I'm working in admittances. Total admittance for this circuit is equal to the sum of the individual admittances. And those individual admittances are the inverses of each one of these individual impedances. So I'll have 1 over 100 with a phase angle of 15 degrees plus 1 over 40 phase angle minus 45 degrees plus 1 over 50 phase angle 60 degrees. I've left out the units, but these are all in ohms. Calculating those out, I get 0 0.01 with a phase angle of negative 15 degrees for admittance 1 plus 0 0.025 
phase angle 45 degrees for admittance 2 plus 0 0.02 phase angle minus 60 degrees for admittance 3. For this summation, it's going to be a lot easier if I'm working in rectangular coordinates instead of polar coordinates. So for admittance 1, if I do this conversion, the, the, the real part is 0 0.01 times the cosine of negative 15 degrees, and the imaginary part is 0 0.01 times the sine of negative 15 degrees. So I won't go through all those calculations because it's going to be the same for each one of these admittances, but what I end up with is 9.66 minus J 2.59 millisiemens plus 17.7 plus J 17.7 millisiemens for the second admittance. And the third one, I get 10 minus J 17.3 millisiemens for the third admittance. And yes, my window is open so you can hear people walking by outside. So when I'm doing the addition, I can add the real parts and those three values summed together gives me 37.36 for the real part of the admittance and then I can sum the imaginary parts. And the sum of those imaginary parts is negative 2.19 millisiemens, so I get negative J 2.19 millisiemens as the total admittance. It's going to be much easier to invert this admittance value to give me the total impedance if I convert this into polar coordinates. So in polar coordinates this value is going to have a magnitude of the square root of 37.36 squared plus negative 2.19 squared and that comes out to 37.4 millisiemens and the phase angle will be the inverse tan of negative 2.19 over 37.36 to give a phase angle of negative 3.35 degrees. And now my final step, calculate the total impedance, which is equal to the inverse of the total admittance. So that is 1 over 37.4 millisiemens with a phase angle of negative 3.35 degrees. So the magnitude part, 1 over 37.4 millisiemens, gives me 26.7 ohms. And inverting the phase angle gives me 3.35 degrees. So there we go. There's the total impedance of these three parallel components. And I hope that helps with your understanding of parallel circuits when dealing with AC signals. I really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.